What's up guys, Nifty here from Envy's CSGO team, and we're gonna talk about five different ways that are gonna improve your opping in CSGO. So these rules can kind of apply for a lot of things. Um, the first one that we're going to talk about is experience. Um, this is just something that you gain through playing the game a lot, just repetition through doing the same play or move or playing the same area of the map over and over and over. Um, so I'll just give you a, uh, like a short example of um, an experienced play with an op. Um, so what you're going to do, we're on Inferno, we're just running from CT spawn and this is a B pick. So what you'll do is like you'll run here, throw a bounce of smoke off the wall, and you'll just peek. And you'll probably catch this guy running up. There's a very good chance that if a team is taking banana, there'll be one guy will be running up this way, probably anti-flash, and you'll catch him right here. Um, if you don't catch him right there, you'll catch somebody at the bottom of T-Ramp. Um, now here's where the experience play comes in. As soon as you get this kill, knowing when to back off. Like, so as soon as you get the kill, no more risk, you can back all the way back up into B site and you can play safe because you've got the 5v4 advantage for your team. Um, the inexperienced play, for example, as I'm sure most of you can guess, would be getting the kill and then coming back and re-peaking again. Um, the, I would not advise that just because there's a very good chance that if you do re-peak, the, uh, the enemy team opper will probably be posted on you. So that's a great example of an experienced play. Um, just staying calm and composed and, and thinking about the fact that uh, you know, you've know you got the man advantage for your team, you did your job essentially, and now it's okay because um, it was low risk and you still have all of your utility and you're in a great place for your team. Um, so the second thing that we'll talk about is confidence. Um, and something that all of you guys may notice when I go through these five things is that all of them kind of intertwine. Um, so what I mean by that is like, first of all, in order to even go for a play like this, you have to be, be confident in yourself. Um, that's very important because if you don't if you don't have the confidence, then you're probably not gonna hit the shot, or maybe you'll like run into a wall on your way here because you're not you're not focused and you're not confident, um, you know, or something just might mess you up and you're not gonna feel too good about it. Um, so confidence is a very important thing for an opper because this is the X factor of whether or not you will decide to re-push an area and, and clear it. Like, let's say the enemy team took top banana and um, it's, a, it's a very good play usually for an opera to kind of re like walk push into the, into the car area and try to find that pick. Um, and that takes confidence. You don't want to just do that like willy nilly. Um, so that's the difference between like an experienced player with confidence and, and an inexperienced player with low confidence. Um, so as I'm mentioning th these things, you guys may notice in your experience with Counter-Strike that a few of these things will resonate with you. Like, oh yeah, I remember that time that, you know, I was feeling indecisive and, you know, I wasn't too confident in myself. So I kind of like, pushed up and I didn't really clear all the way. So I didn't really get the information necessary. So I just backed off and then I rotated to A and the team executed B <laughs> um, and we lost the round because of it. So just keep that in mind. That's a very important for an opera. And again, how you're gonna gain confidence is just by doing something over and over and over again. So if you go for this half wall pick and you fail, you just need to keep doing it over and over and over again. I've probably done this 5,000 times. <laughs> so, um, Again, just just stay, stay like true to it. What it is that you want to achieve. The third thing that we're going to talk about is decisiveness. Um, as an opera and as a player, a Counter Strike player in general, this is very very important. We'll use an example here at A. The op roll on the team is very very important. Um, you can change rounds. You can change an entire game. The way the way the other team approaches the entire half just by how the op roll is playing. So it's very important that you exert such a high level of decisiveness that they don't know what to expect from you. And also it shows, again, how it intertwines. 
usually when you're decisive, it's because you're confident and you're experienced. So a decisive pick would be something like this. You're jumping across mid spot. If you don't see an opera, you've made the decision already. It takes you half a second. So if you jump across mid, somewhat low risk, um, especially you want to do something like this if you have like the best spawn. Um, so something that kind of looks like this and you jump across mid and it's kind of like low risk. If you don't spot the offer, you've made your decision already that you're gonna repeat because there's a good chance that there's just somebody with a rifle down there. So you have the advantage in this fight. And the next like half of where the decision is made, as soon as you get that kill, you're moving away. You're not, you're not repeating again um, because this is how you get killed and you lose that man advantage for your team. Um, so you wanna be decisive and you wanna back up to a different angle, whether it's uh, now you back up and you hold boiler, or maybe you take that shot, get that kill, and you rotate all the way back around to arch side. Um, these plays are very, very important for an opera, but not just the opera. The rest of the the rest of your team, when you do that, and they sh and they see how decisive you're being and how confident you're being, um, and you're staying alive after getting entry picks, it makes them play better. They feel more comfortable. They feel like they have more space to work with on the map, you know, everything just kind of flows a little bit better when everybody's playing good CS. Uh, the fourth thing that we're going to talk about is discipline. That has a lot to do with with repeaking and also not aggressing when you shouldn't. So like an example of aggressing when you shouldn't, let's say like 4v4, um, three of you guys are in A, you've got one guy playing B, and you know that uh, the majority of the enemy team is in brackets, okay? And you have a guy, you have your teammate in pit, and you have another teammate, Moto, and you just so happen to be opping lane this round because let's say you just went for that mid pick, maybe you opened up the round, and you know that they're all brackets. Um, a discipline play would be to play it kind of safe um, because if you were to aggress lane by yourself and even miss the shot, even if you got a kill, getting traded here is really bad for your team. The T's kind of have the, have the advantage there if they kill you. Um, and especially if you, miss, if you miss your shot, then now your team's at a disadvantage here in the A bomb site. So you have to, it's very important to stay disciplined in a scenario like this. Um, maybe you want to take a safer angle, something like this, so that if they do swing across lane, um, you just get the kill and now you can back up to a spot like this. This is a very powerful spot in the A bomb site for an opper, um, especially if you have a pit player and somebody watching your back at Moto. Um, because you can just get another shot and you can hide. Um, so again, all these things are going to intertwine. You know, discipline ties in with experience and decisiveness because it's still a decision to stay disciplined. You know, once you do it enough times, you don't really need to think about it, but um, it's all mixed together. So the fifth thing that we're going to talk about is versatility. This is very important for an opper because you don't want to be an opper that plays the exact same way, the exact same style, the exact same spots on every single map. Um, you know, let's say you're always a pass opper. You don't, you don't want to do that. I'm not saying that you can't be impactful that way, but um, you know, if there's a goal to play like at the highest level of CS, you want to be able to do all different kinds of styles of opping. So you want to be able to be aggressive and find picks. You want to be able to disrupt timings. And what I mean by that is like, uh, let's say that there's no mid smoke here and you're not peaking mid like right away, like I showed you in an earlier example. Maybe you start here and you find a timing where maybe you think the other team's uh, aggressing up mid. So maybe you don't peek it right away, but you peek it late and then you clear it. And maybe you get a pick from it, maybe you don't, and then you just fall off. Um, an example of like a really, really aggressive pick would be doing something like mulling down mid and you take this all angle. You don't want to be afraid to do things like that as an opper. Yes, there's a slight risk that somebody might run through that molly and take some damage, but these are some picks that that you can't be afraid to do as an opera to open up rounds, especially if your team needs it. Um, but you also want to be able to be a completely capable passive opera where you can just post up on like very passive angles like this and hit those shots. There are a lot of players, I've even had plenty of times in my career where I've had trouble uh, just hitting static shots like this. Um, I didn't feel as comfortable 
as when I was in like a hectic situation, you know, kind of just like on a more aggressive angle. So it was something that took a lot of work for me um, and experience to, to kind of build up like confidence holding these angles and hitting these shots fast enough. Because also when you're a passive, when you're in a passive opping position, you have to be very, very focused um, on your crosshair and just be very fast with your reaction time. Um, because none of these shots are impossible. You just, you just have to feel it. So just think about versatility and it's very, very important for an opper. Um, so I'm just gonna recap real quick about the five things that we talked about. Experience, um, confidence, decisiveness, discipline and versatility. I'm sure you can use your imagination to see how all of those in, uh, intertwine together. I think that those are the most important things for an opera to embrace. So I just wanted to be clear on the fact that everything that we talked about, um, this applies to all levels of CS. Um, it doesn't matter if you play matchmaking or if you play ESCA pugs or um, maybe you're playing on a semi-professional team or even a professional team. All these things apply because even professionals don't have everything mastered. Uh, these are all things that you can kind of reinforce or even take upon yourself to, to begin learning. I think every level of Counter-Strike is capable of, of learning these things that we've talked about in this video. So um, again, experience, confidence, decisiveness, discipline, and versatility. Um, think about how you can implement all of those things together and you can immediately become a better player. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully the five things that we talked about in this video will make you a better opera and a better teammate. I appreciate you for watching.